Hello and welcome to the screen recording of installing JBoss Application Server 7 uh, with uh, Windows IIS 8 on Windows 8. Um, this is a walkthrough and a couple things that you will need to do before you get started is to download all the packages that are needed. Uh, first off, you will have to download the JBoss Application Server itself. I've already done so here. And uh, you will also have to download the uh, JBoss Web Native Connectors from JBoss itself. The current version there is 2.10. And uh, if you want to type in the address, it's www.jboss.org, JBoss Web, downloads jboss-native-2-0-10, uh, sorry, .html. And uh, in my case, I downloaded the uh, particular platform version for x64 on Windows. And this is the particular file I downloaded for, for use on this particular demonstration. However, the, the first thing to install is the Java runtime environment if you have not done so. And I will go ahead and, and do that real quick and uh, we'll go from there. In my case, I will change the destination folder for the installation and move it away from the program file subdirectory and place it into a uh, directory right under the root. I name it uh, C, just Java, and place the installation of the Java runtime on it. After the installation of the Java runtime is complete, I am now extracting the uh, JBoss um, zip files that I've downloaded to their default location. I will move them after the unzip is complete to the final location that I want to use to install. I am now configuring the Java uh, runtime environment slightly differently based on some of the recent security breaches. I'm actually going to completely disable all web browser access to Java. We only need to run the server on it, not our browser plugin. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually uh, extract the JBoss native uh, web connectors here, or wrappers, and put it on the drive system where they were as well. So once the extraction here is complete, let me move um, the JBoss files where I want to move them. Finally, first of all, I'm going to just rename this one here to JBoss and uh, cut it right into my drive root. And here's here are all the JBoss files. I'm going to go back to my native connectors and take anything that's in the bin directory, including the service bat file that is not there. Um, in the standard installation and move them right into the bin directory here and paste it right there. So now I have a combined list of files. At this point in time, I could actually go ahead and um, start a standalone command uh, window-based version of JBoss if I like. Uh, to do that, I have to uh, start the command window in application uh, administrative mode. So I'm going to right click on the command prompt and run as administrator. That will open up my window in administrative mode. So I'm going to simply go in and go to the bin directory of JBoss and I could just type in standalone uh, that to start it up is going to take a while for the first time startup of uh, JBoss. Once the startup completes, we'll get 
the started in and milliseconds notification. At this point, we can actually access something, though we won't be able to log in as we have not configured um, our administrative user. So we will do that next, I guess. There we go. That's the notification we get. So let's configure the administrative user real quick. For me, I'm just going to start up another command line window in administrative mode and go back into the directory that I used and start the program called add user dash user dot bat and walk through the prompts that will be presented here. We're going to management user, use the management realm, assign a username and password. And we're going to say yes, even though it's easy to guess. And we now have configured something. And upon the next restart, even now, I think we can just go in and refresh the page, should be able to get to the administrative section. However, we really wanted to install and run uh, JBoss as a service and connect through IIS 8. So those are the next steps that we are going to uh, follow. So we are actually going to use WordPad as our editor to make some changes to the files that we need to make. So we're going to open uh, our services definition file. Let me just see whether I can find it. JBoss, in this case, the standalone configuration. Let's change that so we can see all files. And the standalone XML file is the one that we want to open. So at this point, what we are going to do is add a protocol mapping for AGP or uh, the Apache JSERF protocol. And to do that, we will find the subsystem tag and see whether we can find the default one. Let me blow this up a little bit. Uh, for the web realm, The easiest way to do that maybe to look for HTTP and find um, the subsystem there that we need to modify. We need to add the connector protocol that uh, IAS will use to connect to JBoss, and that's the AG, AJP13 um, protocol. And I'm actually going to paste that in rather than type it and right there. As you see, I have pasted another uh, at, uh, attribute for the subsystem. It's called connector. Name is AGP. Protocol is AGP backslash 1.3. This is important because I haven't seen that documented quite as uh, often as it needs to. Because if you uh, don't have scheme and most examples don't have it, the 7.1 version of the JBoss application server will not start up correctly. Um, the socket binding here is AGP. In the socket binding group, um, AJP should already be part of it. So this is really the only change we need to make to uh, for JBoss to accept inbound connection on this protocol from IIS. So the web server and the application server can talk um, successfully. So just a quick search for the remainder. Um, we should find that the default port or socket binding is 8009 for AJP, which is perfectly fine. So we're going to save this. So the next step for us is actually going to open the services.bat file, which um, we will use uh, later on to register the services. So that is um, where we copied it initially, uh, which is in the bin directory of the JBoss. There should be a services.bat file. Um, that file was actually delivered by the web connectivity on web native connectors that we downloaded separately the 2.1 version of, of that collection of files. 
it is not very up to date. So we have to make a few changes there that are not quite obvious, but uh, make it uh, so that the 7.1 version of uh, JBoss can actually um, be run as a service in Windows. As you see, this is fi fairly outdated. Um, it's from the 5.0 version of JBoss. So I'm just going to change the service name to JBoss here and then maybe adjust this a little to what it is now. And uh, we're just going to do this one similarly. And uh, let's find a couple system problems that we have that need to be changed. So what we'll do is wherever we have run.bat, we actually need to change it to standalone.bat. And I'm going to just going to blanket replace everything. Uh, that's good. I think I got everything. Um, the next thing that we won't worry about is the shutdown command, which is actually misstated. So let me see where I can find it. Shutdown. Um, all these shutdown elements here um, no longer work in 7. So we have to paste in an uh, equivalent call for shutdown um, and see whether I can copy and paste it correctly. There you go. This is actually the correct call to shut down in 7.1. Uh, if you leave this in, you will actually shut down your server, so it's not really what you want to do. So that's the modification that's needed. There should be another one right down here. We're just going to um, take that out, and that should be it as well. So let me do a save, and that should do the trick. Before we start doing anything um, with the service itself, um, let's shut down by pressing Control C on the running terminal window that's running um, JBoss right now, so we can uh, start it up as a service successfully without the conflict. Okay. After we modified the services back to our liking, we will actually um, ensure that we're in the bin directory, which should be still there. Let me see here real quick. Indeed, and we will just uh, run the services or service, sorry, dot bat, and uh, we should ask for install. So it should uh, hopefully register a service in uh, the Windows services area. So let's see whether we can uh, find that. So we will just pull up the control panel and see whether we can find the services. Oops, sorry. Go back to control panel items, administrative tool, services. And indeed, we see the uh, JBoss application server 711 now registered as a service. Let's see whether we can start it up. And seemingly, this has started up. Um, and let's see whether it responds to call on its default port. Still not IIS, it's our next step. I guess there was something with Chrome, localhost 8080. See whether it comes up. Yay. Administrative console should work. Uh, if we remembered our user and password, then we should get this. Uh, just quickly checking on our um, protocols. Here's the AGP, AGP protocol that we registered, which is in addition to the HTTP protocol. So the next step is really to connect IAS backup uh, to um, JBoss. So if I, for example, just pull the local host without the 8080 port, um, we still get the IAS image. We want in the end uh, ensure that this goes to JBoss and uh, whatever we want to deploy on it instead. So we have to deploy a connector in order to do that, we will use the VON code connector uh, that is available at tomcatiis.riaforge.org, and we just download it to our download folder. And there it is. Let's open that one up, and I think this is an old download. So we're just going to rename this. This is our fresh download, so we'll use it. One thing to do before we do anything else, use the Windows properties and unblock it so we can use it. This is a new security feature in Windows 7, and I think Vista and above, sorry, 
uh, that um, Mark's download from the internet. We need to be able to use it, uh, so we will have to unblock it. So I'm just going to extract from here on um, the connector. And uh, once the extraction is complete, I want to go in there and just run the setup here. And I'm going to run as administrator here as well because it has to make some changes for us uh, that help uh, connect IIS to um, uh, JBox. I'm going to say yes here. Um, it was asking that it should install .NET for me, and I said yes. I will accept the license, walk through this. I'm going to accept the defaults uh, because we set up the uh, JBoss as on the same machine um, as the IS and the connector. So here, this is correct. We will enable this for now. Uh, nothing to be checked here. And I'm going to install that as a global um, or all IS sites will be redirected for JBoss use. And I'm going to uncheck this, and I'm going to say, let's use servlets, um, which is a, a fairly substantial change. That means we will redirect all traffic flow, flowing through IIS to Tomcat. We want to be selective, meaning we want to have static pages be served from IIS. We probably want to be a little more specific than that. And we will also enable sub-configuration. And the next thing for me to do is just wait. Once the connector, connector installation is complete, we are now ready to direct traffic through from IIS to uh, uh, JBoss. And so we'll check that out here. So I'm just going to type in localhost again, leave off the port, and see what we get. And in our case, we're not very successful. Uh, in my case, I just had to refresh it because it looked like it was cached. So we are uh, getting JBoss responses through IIS as I haven't specified a port. Um, let's go to the administrative console, which will actually switch back to uh, the Tomcat built-in thing. But we're going to deploy uh, something. So let's um, add content to JBoss and see how it flows through IIS. And in my case, I've just downloaded a, a project from the web, uh, which is uh, a cold fusion engine uh, named Rilo. And if I put it correctly in my downloads area, there it is. And I'm going to see whether I can deploy that on JBoss and access it through IIS as our final step of our verification. In my case, I'm just going to shorten the name. Obviously, if you want to deploy multiple versions of this project, you want to have some sort of version-specific identifier. and. Uh, so from there, I'm going to enable it as well, and uh, we'll wait until that's complete. Once the enablement of my uh, Rylos Cool Fusion Engine is complete, I get the message that it is deployed, and I should be able to access it. So let's go ahead and access our project through IIS. So that means we won't specify a port, and should be right here. So let's see whether we get it. And there it is, truly, we've actually deployed a project through um, uh, IIS. Uh, we are accessing it on, on JBoss. So what we've been able to do here um, overall uh, is to uh, deploy JBoss as a native Windows service and deploy connectivity uh, to uh, JBoss project and through uh, IAS using the uh, bond code connector. Um, that's all I have for this. Uh, thanks for listening.